Mm. Hello, everyone. Oh, let's see. Let's get this. Uh, let's get this rolling here. How is everyone doing tonight? <clears throat> let's see here. Let me start this up. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's get a new picture up there, and I won't mess this up. All right, how's everyone doing? Hey, listen, my name is Kurt. I'm a dad who draws, and you are here with me tonight right now. It is Wednesday night, and this is our Wednesday night live where we come together and find a picture that we draw a portrait of. Wednesday night is always portrait night. And uh, let's see, so we've got this guy here. Uh, how we come up with this picture is I will uh, post uh, a bunch of choices in uh, Facebook, in our Facebook group, and then from there we vote on them. And so this guy ended up winning and I think you all chose rather well. Let's see who we've got. Randy here. AJ is here. John. <laughs> uh, Leah is in the house. Look at that. What a great crew. <laughs> so, yeah, let's see. What else? Uh, if you are interested, we do have some uh, paid classes. They're down in the description. And there is also a link to our Facebook group. If you are looking to get part of any Facebook group, I would recommend you join us. We have such a great crew of people that are so helpful with one another and it just keeps uh, takes some of the difficulty out of drawing because you have a community helping you and encouraging you along the way so uh, thank you for being here yes okay yes Pamela is here from Illinois Illinois is is checking in that sounds awesome so listen let's get into this tonight because I think this guy has a tremendous amount of character but before we do, I always like to go over some basic, basic ideas when it comes to, uh, hey, Russell, how are you? Uh, it's always a good idea to kind of review some basics, okay? I never know who's going to see a video or at what stage. So let's, let's spend 15 minutes and go over through some initial steps, okay? So let's, let's start off just with... Uh, well, let me get a clean page here that I could draw on. So I have I have a three-step process that I was taught many, many years ago by a great, great instructor. In fact, he would be my mentor. His name was Carl Noss. Carl teaches um, animation in, uh, in Southern California. And so he originally is the one who first showed me or taught this method. And I've never seen anyone else teach this. So... Uh, he would talk about when you approach uh, any type of portrait drawing, you've got to ask yourself these three questions. You've got to determine the 2D, the 3D, and the placement of the face. Okay, this is this is key. So let's let's kind of walk through those three questions that are, we are going to ask ourselves. So let's start off with three spheres. Okay, three spheres. So what do I mean by that? So if you think of a 2D, a 2D axis as like um, the hands of a clock. And you know, if, if it's at midnight, you know, as, as, the, as the hands go around the clock, they go to the left or they go to the right if you have a broken clock. But so this is the 2D axis. If I, if I look straight at the camera and I tilt my head to the right, that is 2D, all right? Or I tilt my head to the left. So this is a single plane, and I'm tilting my head to the right or to the left, all right? So let's call this guy, let's call this guy A, B, and C, okay? So A, we're gonna say, is leaning a little bit in that direction, all right? B, is leaning in the other direction just like this now this is the axis the axis of where how the head is leaning one direction or the other and we'll put b almost we'll put c almost straight up and down all right so that right there is the 2d axis determining 
whether the head is leaning to the right or to the left. The next we got to determine is what's the 3D axis. So if I come back here so you could see my head, if I, if I lean to the right, okay, that's my 2D axis. But then if my head comes forward, that's the 3D. Or if it goes back, see, the, that's, we have to determine that. So that would be considered the 3D axis. So on A, let's say that this is coming slightly forward. All right, and we're going to say this, this right there is the top of the head. And you can't see the bottom of, bottom of it. All right, let's see, you know, let me just see what happened there. We'll say that B now, we'll see, we'll say that B is leaning back just a little bit. So let's, let's determine, let's draw that uh, pointer so that we could see the underside of it slightly. And this is where the bottom of that axis is coming out, okay? And then let's go over to C, and we're going to say this C is neither leaning forward nor backward. It is almost exact looking straight up. And this is almost the same position that our model is going to take tonight. And we're going to see it in just a second. All right, so that's the 2D axis. Let's determine where the face would go. So on A, I always like to use my uh, um, the... Uh, not the eye line, but the brow line to determine where I hang everything from. Okay, so since we're looking, since A is coming towards us, we're going to see the brow line like this. All right. And if B is turning away from us, we're going to see the brow line like this. And since C is looking straight at us, this is going to be straight across. So last, last thing to determine is where is the face along these planes. So if I've got my, uh, if I've got my axis right here, and let's just say I'm leaning over, there's my 2D. And now I'm leaning forward. There's my 3D. And now the last thing I can do without changing the 2D axis or the 3D axis, I can twist my head. So I can point my face in different directions without adjusting those axes. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I mean by face placement. So let's, let's say over here on A, we're going to drop. This is going to end up being the center line of the face. So the, the face is pointing in that direction. And this is, I'm just making this up. There, there's nothing that, right, these, I'm putting the placement of the face wherever I want. Everything else, there's, there's science behind it. Okay, this is going in that direction. And then I'm going to, make this almost a three-quarter view so but it's still looking straight on a three-quarter view straight on would look something like this you see so my 2d axis is straight on 3d axis is straight up and down <clears throat> but my face is looking in a different direction okay all right once we once we determine all three of those things, now we can get into, start getting into the mechanics of building our model, all right? So next thing I want to determine is I want to know where the temple is. The temple, all right, the temple is you could take your fingers and you could feel it. It's right on the outside of usually your eyebrows. It's right here on your head, okay? Right there, those are your temples. So we want to determine where those are at. So if I look at A, one temple is going to be on the edge there, and the other one's going to be over here. If I look at B, here this temple is going to be right there, and that's going to be right there. And then on C, 
since it's a three-quarter view temple's going to be over there and now this is going to be a little bit further away because it is a three-quarter view okay so what you've created here sometimes you will hear somebody say find the t use the t of the face and the t of the face is a line that connects the two temples and then goes down the center all right so you don't need to put this in i'm just kind of showing it to you it's it would be right there and there's your t you see that your t is right there let's talk about the head for a second if I look at the head straight on, it's going to look something like this. The sides, the sides of the head are very flat. But of course the top is round and the bottom is round. If I look at the head on a side view, you see how round? See how round this is? Just like this. Okay? So what you have here is you need to, when we draw a, a portrait, we need to slice off the side of the sphere because the sphere gets sli slid off, gets sliced off on the sides there. So look at A, and I'm just going to draw that, and that's kind of like I've just sliced off the side there. And the same thing's going to happen over here. It's going to going to be have a little bit of a straighter edge to it same thing with B let's slice this guy off just like that this is also going to have a little bit of a straight edge on that side now and then the same with C I'm gonna slide that off and the other side's going to be straight Tonight when we draw our, our portrait, you're going to notice the sides are very straight on our, on our gentleman. Okay, let's, let's continue now and, and finish this off here. Here's, <clears throat> so this, we're going to want to draw a straight line coming down the sides of these. This is going to help indicate, help remind us that the uh, sides are flat. If you, if you kind of think of a triangle, if you think of a triangle, where that triangle comes to a point here, like almost like an equilateral, if you could think of it, this roughly is where the bottom of the nose is. And these are, these are general, <clears throat> these are general proportions, okay? General proportions. We could, t I'm on A now, I could take this distance and repeat it. That's going to be about, that's going to be about, it's uh, to the bottom of the chin. So usually it's like from the brow line to the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. It's, it's about half. So this is where the bottom of my chin is going to go here. Bottom of my chin is going to go here. This is just general measurements, general measurements. All right, let's get the jaw here. So now the jaw, the jaw is going to drop down just a little bit and then it's going to sweep, sweep around. Okay, so let's drop, oops, wrong color there. Let's drop our jaw just a little bit there. It's going to come over here. And we can just sweep it around just like that. And this is going to have a slight curve over there. Drop this down a little bit. Okay. 
same thing over here. We can drop this down just a little bit. And so this, this is essentially the basic, your basic building block for, for your heads. Okay. So when you're, when you're drawing, um, ahead, if you could think of these, these key steps that will help you to create construction. And I always say construction will lead to likeness. So just get the idea of, tr do not think of trying to draw likeness. It will uh, be a hindrance to you. Instead, I want you to think about just drawing the construction. Where are your construction lines? In, process, in the process, look for your planes. These are the things that are going to help you get a better portrait, okay, and help you in the long run. Uh, so, last thing we could do, and then uh, then we'll get started here. Well, you know what? We're going to leave it just like that because I want to give us plenty of time with our portrait to see how how far we can go. But this is the basics for um, uh, taking your next step. So get this down, especially if you're a beginner. Practice this over and over and over again and it will uh, pay off in spades, okay? All right. On to our star of the show, right? <laughs> okay, so let's ask ourselves that question. Let's go through our, and just uh, ask ourselves about, you know, 2D, 3D, and face placement, all right? We always wanna ask ourselves that. So his 2D axis, well, he's looking straight at us. That's obvious. His 3D axis, okay, he's he's neither leaning forward nor is he falling back. He's looking straight at us again, okay? And his face is straight at us. So as far as uh, these, these elements of trying to get these, the three quarter or whatever, we got it. We don't have to worry about that. We're getting a straight on portrait here. So let's go ahead then and move into drawing. All right, here we go. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and start with a sphere. This is where we're going to begin. And let's get that. We already know that it's looking straight at us. So this, this is going to represent the brow line. We got the brow line there. Let's go ahead and get that center line coming down. Okay, the temples. Look, look at where the temples are on our guy. All right, they're not they're not that far out. So let's let's drop them in here. That's gonna be my temples. And now you can see, like right right where his temples are, it's it's very flat. So let's go ahead and just kind of take our eraser and and erase the sides of his skull there because we don't need those. We don't need those. All right, let's go ahead and think of this equilateral triangle. Oops. Something about there, maybe. And then we know that the bottom of his chin is going to, that's going to be about halfway.
So let's look at this here now. Let's let's bring up a new layer here. So I've already determined that that is going to be my uh, brow line. All right, there is my center line. I've already established that this is going to be where my nose is. And I'm going about halfway, so I'm just about, I'm about there. Now, in my drawing, I could already see I've elongated the nose just a bit. So I would want, you would want to make that adjustment if, if you're trying to make it as realistic as you can. So let's, let's just adjust that slightly. All right, there you go. And this is why we do it. Get your measurements down first before you uh, start getting into the detail. Okay, so then next thing, let's take a look at this. Look at this, just let's get an idea of where his mouth is. Look at that. Sometimes they say you could break the bottom parts ups in thirds, okay? But I don't want to use that bottom third. I just want to use proportion and just kind of guesstimate how far down that mouth is. So let's... Let's make that determination right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say his mouth is right there. Okay. Now, if I come down on the sides of his, of his uh, head there, these, the jawline, lines up exactly with the mouth. Okay, the corners of the jaw. So we'll draw, we'll bring that corners down and then we'll, we'll just uh, sweep it down like this. Let's get the let's get his nose and usually always with the nose. I always talk about having this uh, keystone shape, right, like that. And I'm just I'm looking at his nose here, and it it kind of has a a bit of a flare out like that. You see that? We're going to add the wings in just a second here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add the wings. And I can see he has a little bit of tone underneath. Okay. Eyeline is going to be right along here. Right where that, uh, right where the uh, keystone shape, the bottom of that is. <clears throat> and usually on the corners of the wings, this is where you're going to start your eyes. It's the corner, that's the corner, the cor outside of the wings goes to the corner of the eyes, okay? And then a lot of times the distance between the two corners from here to here, this is about the width of an eye. So it's it, it, the eyes you can see is one, two, 
and three, all right? So let's do that. Let's, let's use that judgment there and bring these eyes out, just something like that. Let's continue with these eyes here. So as I'm looking at him, the you know the, the top part of his eyes have a very slight slope. So the eye on the on his left side, it's now look look closely. Now I'm talking about uh, let me bring this up here. I'm talking about this eye over here, okay? It it doesn't peak like this in the center. It actually it peaks a little bit toward the inside you see that this is what we want to do here so let's draw that and the same thing with the other one as well it, it peaks quickly and then flare then expands out All right, so now for his pupils, I'm just going to fill, I'm just going to do a solid, I'm going to do a solid uh, color here, a solid value. Because they're really shadowed and they are uh, really deep into that. All right, let's get the, uh, the the bags under his eyes. These always are very uh, these are always very character driven. Hey, Patty, how are you? <laughs> Okay, so the center, let's, now we could use the center of his eyes to try and determine the corners of his mouth. Let's go ahead and, and think of the, um, the center part of his mouth, not the top of his lip, nor the bottom, just where the two lips come together. And it looks like something like this. Okay, so let's do that. Oh, you're okay. I think, Patty, you could quickly jump up to speed here. All right, let's get the philtrum right here. This is the part right underneath the, his, no, his nose here, our nose. And so let's just stick that down. This is going to help to uh, figure out these lips.
Now we're just going to connect these dots. Let's look closely now at the uh, bottom of his lip and look closely at the distance from where the opening of the mouth is to the top of his lip and compare that from the opening of his mouth to the bottom of his lip. You see that? It's, it's much larger than what you see on top. So when you do that, just make sure you give that extra little space there. And let's, let's quickly add a tone to the top lip. I'm going to put this upside uh, U to determine his chin, where his chin is. His chin is at. And then I'm adding two of the creases for the outline of the barrel of the mouth. Oh, you love steampunk stuff. Cool. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm going to make my head a little bit smaller now because we're going to start uh, adding the hat here okay so we're going to come down in size for me a little bit All right. Let's get the let's get his neck in place, and usually the neck will be uh, look look at my head here. The neck usually is lines right up with the width of the head. Okay. So I'm going to come in here like this. I'm going to come in here like this. So let's get his hair, let's put his hair in place first because his hat is covering his hair and we, we don't want to draw the hat in until we get the full of amount of mass on our gentleman here. So uh, I'm what I'm looking at here, this is what I'm going to determine here. All right, so I've kind of got that, all right? But look at this hair. This hair is about twice twice as long so I want to take that into account and the same thing uh, same thing on the other side uh, let's see Patty you say under the ears I'm not sure what you mean by under the ears so let's bring this I'm just gonna bring an outline of the shape of his hair that's all I'm that's all I'm gonna do right now an overall outline of the shape.
We're going to come back and deal with the hair in just a little bit. All right, now let's, let's take a look at the uh, bottom rim of his hat, okay? Trying to let this get caught up here. There it goes. All right, so let's, let's kind of draw that in, just where the hat comes in contact with his head, like this. And let's ignore, whenever I'm drawing a hat, the lines in the neck start under the ears. Uh, yes, yes, they do. Right, right here. Yep, yep, that's a good under the ears. Yep. So whenever I draw a hat, I like to uh, ignore the brim at first. That way I can make sure the hat is uh, going to fit his head. So there are the sides of it. And then we're looking up at it, so we have to make sure it's... We want to make sure that it's going to have uh, that uh, curve that we're looking up at. Okay, let's let's take a look at to, let's take a look at where his brim is here. And I'm just going to mark that brim. I'm going to use the best. That's the front end of the brim right there. And then the back end, where does this line up? And this is this is kind of what I'm looking at here. This is what I'm asking myself. Right there. You see that? Where does that line up? Okay, that's right below the eye, and this one lines up right above the eye, you see? Right there. So let's see, right below the eye, we're going to start our brim right there. And the other one is going to go right above the eye. So now, now I have my starting points of the brim. And I kind of see where it's got, it's got to come here. So let's just kind of bring this out now. All right, and I'm going to add a little bit of a, a curve to this. All right, I'm going to go in and adjust mine a little bit here because it's a little bit more steep than what I have drawn there. And the same thing over here. It's a little bit more steep. Let's get this hat band, and the hat band is also going to have a very curve feel to it. All 
All right, let's get the shirt, his t-shirt in place here. The, just come around like that. Now let's take a look at this hair on the right hand side here, okay? So let's just get the right motion here and just follow follow a strand all the way down, okay? So this is all I'm gonna do. Let's let's think of another strand here. Here we go. We're gonna think we're gonna think wide and narrow. Wide and narrow when we come down here. So watch this. There's wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide. All right. Let's do that again here. Here we go. Let's jar it off with another strand. Okay. Same thing. Let's go in wide and narrow. Wide, narrow. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to create these uh, ribbons, ribbons if you might say, of his hair coming down. Alright, let's come straight down here like this. Maybe this is a little bit tighter down in here. When shading the face, do you put that dark shadow from the hat? Yes. Oh, absolutely. That cast shadow is gonna is falling along the form here. We'll do that in just a minute. We'll definitely do that. Wide narrow. Are you referencing distance from the other strands? Um, let's see, Pamela. No. What I'm what I'm trying to do here, I I kind of kind of see that he has that sort of wavy hair, so I'm, you know. I'm kind of making it up a little bit as I go along, but it's it's this it's this idea right here. Where I'm coming together, it's wide. That's what I'm trying to do. So what will happen is when I when I get here, I'll do something like this. You know, and then I might I might bring one bring one in here and break that up a little bit. So this is this is how I would do hair. And he and he has you know he has that 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 look of hair where it's it's in these different strands. And so when I'm um, I'm just using his hair as a reference. I'm not drawing it exactly. I hope that helps. Like a river flowing and narrow. Yes, absolutely. 
All right, let's let's work on the other side just a little bit. So let's follow this down just a little bit and we can kind of see what is get the strand here to get a feel for it, right? Pamela, you you do look at the hair. You you do look at the model a little bit and you you pick up subtleties about it, but then, you know, then then you're kind of get start to get a little inventive, as well. Let's get these eyebrows in here so we're just gonna I'm just gonna darken them in they don't at this point they don't have a lot of structure I can't see it and then the next thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of tone under the brim of my hat just an even tone going across Now to, to uh, Patty's point there, let's go ahead and drop the shadow that's like cascading across his face here. And I'm lightly going to uh, get the outline of it here. And then over my entire drawing, I'm just going to drop this even tone. make the band on the hat look like a ribbon sure can <clears throat> let's jump up there and do that so the the top of it is going to follow the curve as it gets a little bit lower it's going to be more flat so let's just put one in and we'll, we'll actually try and divide this down the center like that and yours doesn't have to be exactly like it but let's get some of these uh before we start adding some tone to it So I'm, I'm putting these things at different, I don't want these things to be exactly the same. I want to give them variation. Patty, let's let's now let's look at this closely. Let's let's observe this, okay? Let's observe how we would do this. So as as I am looking at the uh, the ribbon closely, 
this is this is what I see. I see one, two, three, four, maybe five very distinct tones. Do you see that? This is a great exercise, actually. Let me let me show you where I see those. Okay. And if, if you are able to pick these out as well, that's great. So I see this, look, this is gonna be super dark here. That's as dark as I can get right there, okay? Then, then I got this next tone. Then I got this next tone right there, okay? And then I have another tone. Let's just kind of keep going down this path. That's like right in here. And then I've got this tone over here. And I'm just going to assume that this is all the same. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. So this is this is what i want to think of when i when i start drawing when i start putting those values in okay so let me let me erase that now and come back to our guy and see how we do all right so first let's start off with let's start off with an even tone but leave the highlight area so what should i do first we're going to do an even tone here Okay, and then this side, make sure that you, same even tone on this side. We're going to build our tones up. This brim is going to have to go darker. I can tell you that right now. Mine. All right, that's one tone. Let's put our next. Let's put our next grouping of tone in here, and this is going to be a little bit more darker on this side. And then right at the edge, I'm going to come back now and go really dark. Not a lot of it, just, just enough. And then on the far right side, I'm going to add one more tone. And there could be even one up on top here. And there you go. Now, the way that I've done mine, does it look exactly like the picture? No, it doesn't, and I'm okay with that. I mean, you could you could come back in and work little bits of it, but just just you have to be careful not to overdo it. And we could even go into his hat here, top part of his hat. I'm going to follow that pattern of the highlights. Let's go ahead and get this beard in now, okay? So let's see here. Let's he's got those whiskers coming down there. There's a little shimmer in the middle mixed with medium tone. 
you know what there is and you can uh, you can either take an eraser to that and create that uh, it comes down to uh, you know what I'll, I'll show you just as we're talking Patty I do see something that I want to change on mine actually and look this is gonna help me at least on mine is look at the brim the very brim of his hat has that he's catching light you see that so I'm gonna come in here like this watch I'm gonna come in there like that and get that uh, get that brim right there but you could you know you could you could come back in here and add just a little bit there okay all right let's keep let's keep going let's try and get this uh, beard and mustache so I'm just gonna use uh, surface lines here and on his right side I'm gonna make it a little bit darker because this is kind of in the shadow can see that there's a cast shadow from his neck coming down over here well, I may have made that too dark but that's okay And then there's a lot of shadow underneath his uh, his eyes here, so I I definitely want to darken that up. And the same thing on the other side as well. So let me, uh, we are past our hour. So let me, uh, is, that to, is that crease under the bottom lip? Is that a crease under the bottom of his lip? Um, this, this right there, yes, that, that is creating a little bit of a shadow, but I'm just going to fill that in. This here is going to be the, his chin. This is where it's under shadow just a little bit. Okay. And his beard actually comes down just all through there just a bit. <clears throat> Let me jump over here to his hair. I just want to work one one section of his hair so you could see it and then you could do it on your own. So let me let me zoom in here just a little bit. And with his hair, this is how I would do it. Just like I did that little example. Right this corner here, I'm going dark and then coming to bring it back out light again. Then, then this piece might have a little bit of shadow so I might make this outside line a little bit thicker. So I just keep keep thinking of thick and thin.
not really following the photo at this point, but and not being careful not to make this thing too messy. It's, it's almost, it's like this idea that you had a cascading ribbon that was coming down. You know, you know who drew what? Which illustrator drew great hair was uh, J. C. Leyendecker. J. C. Leyendecker. Look it up, and look at some of his drawings, and you will be amazed of how he. Uh, you tuned it. <laughs> you would be amazed of how he uh, creates hair. So J. C. Leyendecker. He's a, he was an American illustrator. Uh, pre pre Norman Rockwell, and. Uh, just Google Google his name, J.C. Leyendecker, and just start looking at his hair. You will you will really uh, be inspired by that. Okay, boy, you guys must be tired. I've kept you way over way over our hour here, <laughs> but it's all good, all good stuff, right? <laughs> so, anyways, listen. I just want to thank everyone for watching. Please, uh, as soon as we turn this off. Give a quick quick comment in the uh, video that you liked it. Do all that stuff. Um, that's uh, so helpful. Give a thumbs up to it. And I appreciate you guys uh, just uh, hanging in there and just having a good night, okay? Let's see. I probably put dark and light throughout the rest of the hair. That's all right. You'll, you'll, I, I'll have to, I'd love to see what you did, Patty. So make sure you post it in our Facebook group, okay? Listen, thanks for watching, everyone. My name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws. And thank you, Pamela. This was great. <laughs> I will see you guys later. Okay. Go out there. Make yourself great. Make your day great or your night great, wherever you might be. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone.